Well, I have no idea what the meaning of life is. I wasn't planning on talking about that. As far as I'm, I'm not even sure you need a meaning of life. However, what I would want to talk about is what I think the future might be like uh, hundreds of years from now and what actually will happen to people and things like that if we survive that long. So, of course, we can't know that the future very much, but, uh, uh, but we can surmise things based on what the history has been in the past. One thing that's very important is this idea that things are, if someone brought it up, uh, competition. Where's the biologist? Uh, I'm sorry. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. Okay, you, you talked about competition and, and survival and things like that, or maybe it was the other person. Oh, and then it was the first one. Yeah, maybe it was the first one. Okay, anyway, uh, the principal force that determines the way things go is, in fact, apparently competition. Much of it is for things like, like uh, economic value, but there's also abstract value and personal power. So consider the spear made hunting much more effective. As a consequence, the amount of, uh, of game disappeared, and people who didn't adopt this better method they were gone. They were no longer, they were sort of out of the, uh, the system. They were disappeared. Uh, the society, we've seen similar things in many other cases. Recently in my history, I can remember that there, were, there was the invention of the fax machine, and businesses that didn't have fax machines disappeared. There was a moment in history, and now we're seeing the same thing with webs and, uh, and, uh, and lots of computation and, and the network. But the really interesting, and smartphones, oh my gosh, which I don't have. I hate them. But the important deduction that we make here is that the effectiveness that any, any improvement that increases, increases the effectiveness of an effort rapidly becomes a necessity for individual survival. That's a serious problem. Okay, so for example, we know that labor-saving devices like the washing machine and something like that did not make people have less, time, less work, but they had made cleaner clothes. It's a very different sort of world, okay? Uh, you know, nowadays, for example, uh, if I want to write a paper, it used to be that I'd send a typewriter thing to the printer and they would, you know, the, the journal and they would work it out. Nowadays, you have to typeset it yourself because it's possible. Okay, and that's, the, uh, that's changed the world. So the force of competition is based more effectively, more and more dependent upon technology. We're now symbionts with technological systems. Okay, and that's, especially like for most of us have these telephones, although I don't, okay, the, most of us can't survive without them and they don't get produced without us. And this is true at a biological scale too. Uh, most of us would be vision impaired without our glasses. Okay, or something like that, like may have contact lenses. Uh, most, would not be, most of us would not be alive without the occasional intervention of modern medicine, especially without the support of modern water, water and sewage disposal systems. The most, probably the most important medical invention of all time is the sewage disposal system. More, that's, the plumber is the, uh, if you've lived past five, it's because your plumber was pretty good. If you live past 30, it's because your dentist is pretty good. And if you live past 90, it's because your mother had the right genes. Okay? But in any case, uh, I want to just say that the, this trend, I think, will continue. So, that, you know, you think of it this way. The 19th century was the century of applied classical mechanics, where, you know, energy and things like that, you make tr transportation and communication. And uh, 20th century was about, about atomic physics and, therefore, uh, things like electronics and, and uh, communication at the, uh, with electronic media, broadcast media, and things like that, computers. We're now nearly at the end of that, okay? We're now at the... Uh, Ha, huh. see, a person who's stuck with a computer, okay, at the end of the electronics revolution, and we're into the age of biology, as far as I can see, where, uh, but employing information technology, this is, this is a big deal. So the application of, of what I'm really imagining is that the, the slowly, we're going to, the, the prosthetics are going to replace us. That is, we're going to, we're going to slow, as humans, as time goes on, more and more parts will become interchangeable and replaceable. Okay? And eventually, there's going to be very little left of the biological creature called a human, and there's going to be a lot more of the, of the electronic stuff okay, that's part of us. By golly, I would love to have a, a computer algebra chip that fits in my brain. Because I, I like to deal with differential equations. I really love them. Okay? And it's really unpleasant that I have to actually work these out by hand or use some other computer that Mr. Wolfram made, maybe? Ugh. Okay, whatever, or ones that I write myself. The fact of the matter is that these, these are things that are going to happen. A few hundred years from now, no mathematician's going to be, be competitive 
if they're not, if they're not completely full of, of the appropriate chips that are in fact provide very fast service for doing complex computations. Okay, think of it that way. So that's a pretty impressive world. Well, of course, we already have that to some extent. That people have cochlear implants and things like that besides glasses. So, you know, which connections to the neural system is, are on its way. Okay. Over the next year, so I expect this you know, over the next few hundred years to go unabated, and in the long run, uh, there's not going to be much left of the of the of the biological creature. But that's probably a good thing. The one thing I really worry about, though, is who controls this. Okay, as it stands now, we're giving the control to the entertainment industry and the advertising industries. Okay, everybody's going to have everybody. You know, if they if you look at what's going to happen. The, the normal course of events is everybody's got an indwelling boom box in their head. I don't want that. I want the algebra chip, okay? And that's, I think, our main job then is to ensure that there's an interesting int and intellectual future for our descendants, whatever proportions they are of biological and, phys and electronic. I have a question. Jerry, I do have a question. So, um, as more and more parts become replaced, the process of evolution is not quite the same anymore. It's really about who can afford the better parts. And the part genes versus the part, you know, dollars is uh, balancing out differently. So I'm curious about your view I mean, of extinction. You're saying, oh, the people who don't have all these cool parts are going to go extinct, but they don't have them in their genes. Of course not. Oh, yeah, but the thing I really... We've got our economic world is, is completely screwed up. Okay, both the communists and the capitalists got it wrong. They attached a value to the work people do. Okay, that's why it's all wrong. Okay, that's why we have a terrible situation when we're replacing people. For example, in most cases, most of us are going to be replaced for, by mechanical mechanisms to do the work we do. Okay, for almost everything, the hardest thing to replace is the plumber. Okay, because that's the plumber has to get into small places and be very strong and, and also smart. Okay, so the 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 but the the real thing here is humans have intrinsic value and we should be build, figuring that out. We should make a system where people have value independent of the work they do. That's the bug that was the the past where we had a basically a world which was based on a on the fact that there wasn't enough stuff for everybody. And that's just not true. So monetizing people rather than the work they do. The way the, the way they say it is this, okay? The the we can make the the price of goods and services zero because the productivity per person can go to infinite fairly soon. The main problem, the, the only thing that limits that is energy, and by golly, is a kilowatt per square meter falling on the earth all the time from the sun, okay? We don't have an energy problem. And the material stuff is, is easy uh, by, by contrast, too. The real problem is that we have a screwed up economic world, which is where we have putting value on the wrong things.